so today we will discuss all the beautiful functions and features that we can access in a numpy array so last time on this channel we discussed how we can install google collab on our google drive implement machine learning models use data science projects and everything in our google collab drive so uh, in this tutorial i'll be showing you how to uh, work with numpy arrays in google collab so this is the uh, file that i have already created for you and uh, i have opened it in this tab the functions numpy array functions that we are going to go over today we will see what each and every one of them does so uh, as you can see there are a lot of functions that we can do with numpy arrays numpy arrays are very important for any data science task uh, be it image recognition or uh, natural language processing any kind of task you think of right now all the libraries they are working with numpy arrays or uh, numpy in general so there are two flavors of uh, numpy arrays uh, the first one is one dimensional array and uh, the second one is two dimensional array we will see what each of these mean and uh, how we can use them in this tutorial so let's jump into it first of all we need to import numpy uh, the way that we import numpy in any project is uh, just like this import numpy is np okay then you press alt plus enter and it will create a new cell and it will also start running the current cell as you can see our google collab is right now connecting to uh, google compute engine on the background it has now just done and uh, our numpy has been imported so what we can do is just go ahead and see what this range does the other thing cool thing about google collab is it just shows you the documentation right here as you can see everything it even includes an example for example np.arrange this np.arrange what basically it does is it gives you a range of numbers it returns an array with a range of numbers that you have specified for example uh, let's see we say np.3 this means uh, that it will return an array of three numbers we can store this array like this and uh, then we can you know print arr it will return this array so this is how we can you know this is a 1d array it's one dimensional uh, how is it one dimensional because uh, we have only one these uh, square brackets and uh, we have only one row or yeah one row in in this array so that is how it is uh, 1d array and uh, for the next let's see how we can create you know more than 1d array a range 3 uh, 0 and 10 okay what this will do is oh my bad it's a range not a range it's also one of the things so here we can see we have created another 1d array which is between 0 and uh, 10 here as you can see uh, the start is inclusive and the stop is exclusive we can you know include 10 if we want by just increasing this to 11 let's say okay so now it will be from 0 to uh, 10 the third argument here we can specify is the step size okay, the step size is how many steps we want with each uh, number that every successive number it generates for example when I say 2 it will be you know from 0 to uh, 10 this uh, upper bound the stop uh, argument is exclusive so it will go from 0 to 10 but the step size as you can see is 0 then 2 then 4 
you know it goes by jumping two steps with each a number if we say three it will you know generate multiples of three this way we can also generate an array of numbers mm, uh, where if we want uh, multiples of some number so this is how we can use this arrange uh, if you want more details on this you can just simply you know hover over it or uh, let's see if you start typing this function and let it show you the documentation here you can see return evenly spaced values within a given interval values are generated within half open interval the start and stop in other words the interval including start but excluding stop so this is how we can use a range there's uh, a lot of explanation even the start and start these start and stop these need to be numbers and the step needs to be a number and d type yeah this d type is the data type the actual data type if uh, assigned with this a range the return of this area the type of output area if d type is not given in for the data from the other input arguments so what this means is if we have not specifically you know what let's see the example 0 and 5 and we want step size 1 and then uh, d type is let's say int 32 maybe as you can see it we have now specifically told it to use int 32 but if we say so it's not understood okay if we remove if we remove the uh, data type explicitly it will infer from the arguments implicitly so that's what it's saying so the next function that we are going to see is zeros okay and p dot zeros you know what let's move all this code into one cell and then comment it all together that way if, uh, and later when you want to see how it works you can access these notes by the way all these notes will be available in the description i'll I provide the link in the description so now let's see np dot zeros so what np dot zeros does is it returns an area of uh, zeros you know we will have to provide the shape and uh, the default data type is float and the order is c what c does uh, means you know, we will find it out okay c is optional default is c we can either input c or f uh, whether to store multi-dimensional data in row measure c style or column measure for trans style order okay i think this is out of the scope of this lecture so let's get back np.05 it will return an uh, array of five uh, numbers this single uh, column means it is one row and uh, five columns and these are all uh, this is a one dimensional area okay if we say five comma three this will give us a two dimensional array these two square brackets mean it is a two dimensional array okay the number of brackets will this is a trick you can say it will show however many number of uh, digits it is so np dot zeros returns a number we have to just provide the shapes and uh, the next function is np dot ones you know what let's put it in the comment section and let's go with the next one np dot ones here we can generate as you might have guessed by now it's straightforward just like np dot zeros it returns an area of, of one dimensional ones most of the time we need these uh, yeah sorry my bad we need a tuple here it's one 
three by three matrix of ones. Okay, uh, after that we have Lin space. Okay, Lin space is evenly spaced numbers over a specified intervals. Okay, let's put this into comments and uh, let's go over np dot lint space. It generates evenly spaced numbers. Uh, you do not have to compare. You keep that in mind. Do not confuse this with a range. These are pretty similar, but we will see. We have the starting point and the ending point and we have what you can say is the uh, number of points that we want we want only two points and if we say four points this will be you know the starting point is three and the ending point is nine and we want four evenly spaced numbers between the starting and ending point these both are inclusive uh, if you remember in the a range we had this start and stop points but the start point was inclusive uh, it was included in the output but the stop point was exclusive we didn't get it in the output but uh, lint space is you know both of the start and sp uh, stop or inclusive and uh, the last argument is the step uh, number of uh, points we want in our output if we say 14 this will generate evenly spaced points as you can say 3.92 4 point all these are evenly spaced so uh, lint space is a good option when you need something evenly spaced okay so now let's move on to next part that is identity matrix now we can generate an identity matrix in most of the cases uh, in data science we need identity matrix if you come from a mathematics background you might understand the importance of identity matrix so in how we can create a numpy array let's see in p dot eye and uh, we have for example let's say two okay this will generate uh, identity matrix with one by one let's say if we have two by two matrix it's just like if we provide only one argument okay so if you want to see the documentation let's check it out it returns a 2d array with ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else okay as you can see this is the diagonal one one and everyone everywhere else it will be zeros here as you can see we have ones on the diagonal okay zeros everywhere else so this is how you can create an identity matrix and uh, the next part is creating arrays from random numbers random numbers are very important in any programming task or mathematics or any way you like so let's see how we can create random numbers from our numpy arrays np dot random this is what you can say a library in numpy so we can include the different functions from uh, numpy for random numbers by including this we can also do something like import numpy dot random as rand this is a uh, here we have created an alias and uh, now whenever we want any of these functions np dot random dot rand or random dot rand with multiple arguments or random dot rand n we can just go ahead with you know rand dot rand and uh, we want three random numbers so this is how you can use the shorthand method or if you don't want you can say np dot random dot rand it will you know give you the same result but not the same output of course because it's a random number and every time you run it it will return a different result uh, if you want a 2d um, matrix 2d array of random numbers this is how you can get okay if you just provide 3 by 2 or if you say 2 by 2 it will return a square matrix and uh, yeah this is uniform distribution as you can see these are uniformly distributed okay and uh, if you want 
standard normal distribution you can do it like this rand n you have to include this rand n for normal normal distribution if you just place another n here it will give you this normal distribution or it's also called gaussian distribution okay let's we we, we want 12 rows and two columns so this is how we can do the next thing in our schedule is numpy methods on array the different kind of methods that we can you know perform on oh i think i forgot just one other thing we have this other method that's called rand int and let's see a few examples one and uh, let's say five okay this provides a random integer between 1 and 5 if we say between 1 and 15 it will provide a random integer every time you want a new number that you can do with rand int all right so the next thing is the methods on arrays okay let's add a new code cell here so for example let's say we have let's say arr equals np dot range 2 and 10 okay i think this mm -hmm. let's see the output Okay, we have this area of numbers that's between 2 and 10 Z, uh, 2 to how many numbers do we have we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 we have 8 numbers and we want to uh, convert this array into a matrix let's say okay how we can do that is arr.reshap and uh, here you have to be very careful about this reshape function how we can do reshape is by you know if we have only eight elements here we can only reshape these eight elements right so we can go like two four this needs to be multiple yes so then you can just print this matrix okay so here you can see we have a one dimensional array that we have converted into a two by two matrix of eight elements all these elements if we try to let's say two by five matrix if we try to convert it into a shape that is you know exceeds the number of elements that we have it is going to throw an error that it cannot reshape array of size eight into a shape of two by five okay the uh, the trick here is you can just do for example let's say we have eight elements you can multiply these two numbers and see if it is greater than or smaller than the number of elements that we already have if we have a smaller number of elements let's say two by three means six and that is uh, what we have you know we cannot reshape into two by three because it has to include uh, all the elements okay see uh, we cannot reshape it we can do 4 by 2 and 2 by 4 but we cannot do any other shape that does not include all the elements or it exceeds the number of elements in the original uh, list so this is how we can do and uh, the other thing is this era.max okay Mac in array. Okay, what this does is np dot max. max. This will return the maximum in our array. Print max in array. As you can see it is uh, the maximum number is nine 
so similarly we can go min min in error that is two okay and uh, the arg max in arg min they will give you index of max in array they will give you the index of the maximum number in an array error dot max arg max will give you the maximum uh, the number that is maximum its index it will provide 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 this is on the seventh index which is number 10 similarly if we want you know the minimum index of min by simply saying arc.min and it will return zero okay the next thing is arr.shape if we want to see yeah this one is a very useful function that in numpy that we have so for example let's say print arr.shape no, this is a property, it's not a function or method that I've just remembered. Okay, it's 1D array, that means it has only 8 elements in it. Okay, and if we see shape of the matrix, now 2D array, it's going to give us 2, 4. Okay, this is how you can find shape of your data type in numpy and uh, you can also find the data type the data type that associated with this array your matrix by matrix dot d type it is going to return int 32 int 64 okay so that means our elements in, in the array or of int 64 integer 64 bytes of integer types okay so these are the few of the functions and methods that we had on our uh, numpy arrays in the next lecture we are going to see the different functions and methods that we can do on numpy array indexing okay so indexing and selection for numpy errors as well as their operations so stay tuned for many more things and if you like or dislike anything in this lecture if you like these cute kitties just comment down below that will be very happy to know that you like them thanks a lot for your uh, time and uh, let's meet in the next lecture don't forget to subscribe thanks a lot